Hey guys, this is Gary. Today I want to show you three ways to light and shoot artwork like this. Okay, so there's some gear you absolutely have to have besides the artwork. Obviously a camera. And the next essential item would be a tripod like this. So I want to talk about three different lighting scenarios. One would be ambient light such as this skylight. Two would be using continuous lighting, and three would be using flash, two speed lights. Okay, so this is the gear. Uh, let's jump right into method number one using ambient light. Okay, guys, so this is setup number one. This looks like a reasonable setup. The light is coming down, hitting the artwork. I'm going to take a picture. Okay, there's a piece of glass in front of this painting. So that creates a problem because the glass is reflecting this skylight, making it impossible to take the shot. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I can't light this way. I'm going to have to light this way. And I'm going to have to put my camera over here. It's daylight. Uh, while I've been talking, it's, it's a partially cloudy day. The output of the light has changed a little bit. So there's those kind of issues. Okay, so I've repositioned everything. Uh, this is now more of a straight up and down angle, not quite. I lowered my camera. Uh, the reason for this is you want to make sure that your verticals and horizontals should be parallel. And if you just look in your viewfinder and, you know, mess with the camera angle until they're parallel, you'll save some time later on. Now, um, exposure. I'm using manual exposure. And while I'm talking, the sun has gone behind a cloud. Now, this illustrates a problem with, with ambient light, especially window light. It's inconsistent, right? So now I have to change my exposure. Uh, I'm going to meter. And I'm now at one-tenth of a second, ISO 50, f1.8. The reason I'm using f1.8 is for two reasons. Number one, um, I want to get as much light in as possible. And number two, like depth of field isn't really an issue. This is a two-dimensional painting, so depth of field just is irrelevant in this case. Okay, I'm using a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, and this is going to be my setup. The problem with this is this part of the painting is closer to the skylight than this part of the painting, so I'm going to have to correct for the differential, the lighting differential across this painting, in, in Photoshop or Lightroom. Now, as I'm talking, the sun's come out again, so now I'm overexposed, so I gotta change my camera's shutter speed to 1 30th of a second. Now, this is why you need a tripod, okay? You need to lock down the camera's positioning so you don't have to keep worrying about parallels and all that, and as your lighting changes, you're probably going to be hitting shutter speeds that are too slow to shoot handheld anyway. All right, so I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to double check my exposure. And the sun went in again. So now I'm at 1 one fifteenth of a second. Check my focus. Okay, actually 1 tenth of a second. 1 eighth of a second. Okay, so I had to keep readjusting my camera's angle and height because I wasn't getting parallel lines. And while I was doing that, the lighting was changing. So the exposure I wound up with was F1.8, 1 8th of a second ISO 50, right? So things kept changing. And again, this is a problem with ambient light. So uh, I took the shot, here it is. I'm gonna have to do some fixing in Lightroom because the light is not even. All right, let's move on to scenario number two, using continuous light. Okay, so now I've got a continuous lighting set up. I've got these two lights here. Um, and again, you want to try and get an even distribution of lighting. So both of these lights are set for the exact same output. Right now, they're not exactly at the same distance from the frame, uh, but I'll fix that in a second. So my exposure has to change because these are having a lot more impact on the painting than the skylight is. So my exposure uh, had to stop down because there's more light, right? Um, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I'll tell you right now, of the three different scenarios, uh, 
using continuous lighting is the easiest because once you get it set up and once you get your distances and angles and all that it's really simple you can see in your viewfinder that whether the light looks good or not it's really easy to get an exposure there's no change in output or anything like that so continuous lighting of the three is is by far the easiest to deal with I'm going to take a measurement this corner of this softbox is exactly two feet from the edge of the frame and now this one is so these lights are equidistant from the frame okay onward the next setup the last setup is going to be using flashes okay so here's my flash setup okay I've got a flash on a light stand here I've got a flash on a light stand over there. Um, so these are equidistant from the painting. I can't make this a very detailed um, sort of tutorial on how to use a flash and all that, but I can tell you this much. The idea, uh, you, you, you use a flash in two basic ways, either as the only light source that the camera sees or a combination of the flash plus ambient light so achieving that proper balance or ratio between the flash and ambient is how you would take a picture we're going to use the first way where the flash is the only light source lighting the scene obviously i've got uh, tungsten lights overhead right now i've got these two continuous lights lighting me so i'm not going to turn them off when i take the picture using the flash so how does that work i mean how do you create a photo in which the flash is the only thing that the camera is picking up in terms of lighting the painting. Well, usually like say F8 or F11, a shutter speed of like 1 1 25th or thereabouts uh, in indoor lighting will probably yield a black frame. Okay. Now you want to try and keep your, your shutter speed under say 250 because of sync speed issues. Just try and keep your flash below the 1 200, 1 250th range and you'll be fine. Um, that exposure will yield a black frame. So when the flashes fire, the camera will only see the light from the flash. So how do you fire these flashes? I mean, I'm sure you notice that they're not attached to the camera. There's no wires or anything. Basically, these are being triggered by a radio signal, and there are several products on the market which allow you to do that from in, in various price points. I just want to show you one of the least expensive, which is also actually really reliable. So this is a transmitter. It goes on the hot shoe of my camera and this flash has the receiver. So this is a package. It's distributed by a company called Cowboy Studio. You can get these on Amazon for somewhere in the neighborhood between $15 and $20. So it's really inexpensive and I have to say very reliable. So bang for the buck wise, you really can't do any better than this Cowboy Studio combination. I'll try and leave a link in the comments below um, I don't know the model number now how am I triggering the other flash I don't have a receiver on that flash I've got it set to what's known as slave mode when a flash is set to slave mode and it sees a flash signal from another flash it will fire I only need one trigger for this flash the other flash or if I was using multiple flashes I could slave them Anyway, so that's how I'm triggering that flash. So it's a relatively simple setup. These flash heads are oriented vertically, uh, both of them are, because I can set the amount of zoom. So uh, I want a wide beam. I want a beam that's going to come out like this. So I've got both flashes set to 24 millimeters. If I set them wide, it's going to cover the, the height of this picture on both sides. So it'll look very uniformly lit, which is what we're after. Okay, so these flashes are very inexpensive. These are uh, by a company called Yang Nuo. It's a Taiwanese company. And um, this is the 560-2. They don't make this flash anymore. It's been discontinued. The newest version is the Dash 4. So uh, these are fully manual flashes. There's no automatic anything. There's no TTL. There's no uh, high-speed sync. There's no second curtain sync. None of that. They're just very basic manual flashes. You have to set their output from the back of the flash itself. Um, so how do you how do you know 
how, what output to set the flash to. Well, okay, typically we, we would use a light meter where it would measure the output of the flash, you trigger the flash, hold the light meter here, and then you would take a reading and set your camera based on that reading. A light meter, while convenient, isn't necessary. So what you would do, once you've got your camera's exposure set to yield a black frame for the ambient light, then you would basically set an output on your flashes. In this case, I have to make sure that both flashes are set to equal output. Um, then you take a picture. If there isn't enough light, you increase the output of both flashes. If there's too much light, you decrease the outputs. It's really not rocket science. It's, it's a pretty simple principle that's involved here. And usually within one, two, or three frames, you've got the right exposure. Okay, so I happened to turn on my flashes. They were both set to 1 8th power. I took a picture, it was a little too dark, so I increased both of their outputs to a quarter power, and that was perfect. So, two frames. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now I'm just going to take the picture. And by the way, my exposure settings are 1 90th of a second, ISO 50, F11. With my flash output at a quarter power times two, that's the right exposure. Okay, so that's pretty much, you know, sort of the broad strokes of using flash, a flash setup for shooting artwork. Um, so let's go into Lightroom and tweak these images. Okay, guys, uh, here are the three images. You'll notice that they're actually very different. And the thing is, my the white balance in my camera was the same setting for each of these shots. This first one here, ambient. This one was continuous lighting, which, by the way, is daylight balanced, and my camera was set to flash, which is almost virtually the same. And then this was my flash. So they're vastly different, but if I do the editing correctly on all three of these, they should come out to look exactly the same. So let's get started. First, the ambient shot. So right off the bat, when I bring it into the develop module, right here I have the white balance eyedropper. Now, this matte is um, neutral white. It's supposed to be white. So I know that I can use that as my reference for this eyedropper. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the eyedropper, click, boom, automatically color corrects. Now, it's lighter on this side than it is on this side. So I'm going to take my gradient filter and I'll double click on the word effect to get everything back to zero. And then I'm going to make a guess here. I'm going to increase exposure by one full stop. Uh, I'm going to drag across from right to left and that should equalize or at least come close to equalizing the lighting on the image and actually it does. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to hit done. Um, all right the next thing would be to just give it uh, a little more clarity little more vibrance and maybe just bump up the exposure a little bit and that I think will do it. So now even though I talked ad nauseum about getting parallel uh, verticals and horizontals I didn't actually do that so I'm going to go down to transform and I'm going to try auto see if that corrects. It does. Very good. Okay, so actually we're done. So um, basically it straightened out all my edges. Last thing, I want to crop in. So I'm going to go to the crop tool. I'm going to crop in like so. And I don't want any of the mat, so I'm going to be very careful about how I do this. Well, you know what? I'm going to custom. Well, I have to unlock it custom. All right, so now I have independent control over the four sides. So bring that in, bring the left side in, bring the top up a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit done. There we go. All right, so this is done. Now let's open the um, continuous light. I'm going to follow the same basic procedure. Go to the basic panel, hit the white balance tool, Boom, color corrects. So give it a little more vibrance, a little more clarity. Give it a little more exposure. This looks pretty evenly lit. 
Uh, and that just about does it, really. So now I'm going to go down to Transform. I'm going to try Auto again, see if it works on this. Uh, but actually, it's pretty straight. So I'm going to go up to my Crop Tool. Uh, I'm going to go to Custom, bring everything in doesn't have to be perfect you know in terms of cropping to the exact same frame ratio as long as I get most of the painting I'm good and it looks like I did so I'm gonna hit done all right that's done finally the last one flash so I think this is basically color uh, corrected already but I'll click on that to make sure all right a slight shift now my ambient light I had ambient lights in the ceiling. They were being reflected onto the glass, so I have to fix that. But this looks really good. I don't really think I need to do anything except crop in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Custom so I can adjust the four edges independently. Bring it in like this. That looks okay. Uh, like that. Okay, let's see how that looks. All right, good. So the only thing I need to do is fix these ambient light reflections. So I'm going to take my spot tool and I'll just click here and make my opacity 100% and just grab an area. I can make it a little smaller. All right, so that works for that. Click on this other spot. Mm, it's too large. Okay, if I hover away. Yeah, good, perfect. Hit done. Okay, now, if I go back to my library view and look at all these three together, they look very similar, if not exactly the same. So I've successfully edited all three, and they look different white balance-wise in the beginning, but no more. So there you go. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, Lightroom makes the job of doing this uh, a breeze, and that's it. See ya.